This episode of The Casual is brought to you in part by Squarespace. For all your website needs, Squarespace delivers it in an all-around package to help you build a beautiful, integrated online presence. It is that time of the year again, everybody. Welcome to The Casual Week, our end of the year special series that breaks down the best and worst this year of fashion had to offer. Today, we're starting with a bang, our top 10 Western brands of the year, how they fared, and in casual fashion, the why is also included. So without further delay, no more talking. Let's get it. Coming in at number 10, what can I say? Nike. Seriously, we got to do this thing right to avoid the does that almost everyone will instinctively exasperate, ex exasperate <laughs> after hearing that Nike did well yet again for another year. But this is an issue because the brand has become so culturally tied to fashion that its repetitiveness is beginning to show. Between the cash grabby Sakai drop, the Amamanye J3s, Drake's knock the line, Nike didn't disappoint for diehard fans and resellers alike. But is it just too much of the same thing? Time will only tell. But the big win though, is Nike acquiring Artifact as it prepares for its official metaverse action. But we'll talk about how huge that is during Business Casual Week. That said, Nike did it again because of course they did. Coming in at number nine, Crocs. Yeah, yeah, everybody better get it together. Get it together. Crocs have been going strong for a minute now, but 2021 has been one of its strongest years due to the growth of loungewear. And it's all those thinking out there, like loungewear was already around. What you talking about? I got news for you. Loungewear as a concept is killing numbers right now because it was the trend of the early 2020s. And we still in the early 2020s. And Crocs are benefiting so much from that, it's crazy. We saw again Crocs on the runway with Balenciaga and multiple collabs, but the cream of the crop has to go to the Crocs Polex collab with Salehi Benbury. Not only are they pretty dope for Crocs that are well documented as being ugly, these guys, the Polex ones, will run you 300 plus on the aftermarket despite dropping for $85 USD. That tells you everything you need to know about the Croc hype. Respect it. Coming in at number eight, we got New Balance. See, listen, this is an entry that I am proud to put on. New Balance has somehow did something that even Nike couldn't do, and that is become incredibly popular, but readily available. That's partly due to its timely collabs like that with Kith, Ami Leandor, and others, but mostly due to New Balance doubling down on its formula of producing the same high quality product over and over, the most comfortable shoe on the planet, at least in the mainstream. Becoming like the default setting sneaker brand is hard to do, but somehow New Balance did that and it just makes a quality product. There, there it is. Coming in at the seventh spot, we got Rick Owens. Listen, Rick Owens has always been an enigmatic figure in fashion. We can always count on Rick to crack the eggs when they need cracking. The collections were solid, not groundbreaking Rick, but solid. But the big takeaway and reason why Rick is on this list is the platform biker boots. Rick decided, along with a few others out there, that this loungewear thing has to stop. This pandemic wear has to stop. Fashion has to go back to its audacious roots. And the platforms, those biker ones, became the loud statement to make that clear. And it seems many the fashionista got that message. They donned the feet of so many, it's actually hard to count. And while impractical, they do mark the true beginning of an all-inclusive luxury footwear market that's finally becoming a genderless one, something that we can applaud. Number six, we got Ami Leon Dor. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ami Leon Dor has doubled down on its menswear with street elements look as it looks to become even more the brand for practical street fans or maybe older street fans. It's basically a more open and dare I say, exciting Noah. And that comes at no disrespect to Noah. It's just that Ami is a bit more active and loud with its approach. Its minimal takes offer a more refined touch to a wardrobe and its tasteful collabs with Clark's Originals and of course New Balance make it a brand true to its roots and worth checking out. The brand has become so influential that several up and coming labels are following its path as trends are becoming played and quality begins to take center stage. So tip of the hat to ALD, they're doing great work. And if you haven't checked them out, you need to check them out now. So we're down to our top five, but before that, let's get into word from our sponsor, 
Squarespace. In the fashion industry, the competition is fierce and your presentation has to look solid from jump. That's where Squarespace comes in. Beautifully designed templates, easy to use web building tools and social integration make Squarespace the perfect choice for the budding entrepreneur or even the savvy professional. Plus, by using our link squarespace.com slash the casual, you could save 10% when you start. So get that business off the ground the right way and use Squarespace today. Number five, I know a lot of people are gonna get mad at me about this, Supreme, yeah, that's right. Look, everyone knows how I personally feel about Supreme. I don't wear it, but that's okay. We can still give it a good spot. The point is to be objective anyway. So hopefully start a discussion. Anyway, Supreme did a collab with South to West 8 this year. Enough said, and double taps. That's just two. Cause main reason Supreme gets on this list is because of Supreme Junior Watanabe. Supreme has somehow made itself relevant again without it ever being irrelevant which is kind of crazy. And the Junior Watanabe collab illustrates why. Supreme is the ultimate brand for people to get a taste of things they otherwise would not even have on their plate, right? Before the collab, who the hell was paying attention to Junior Watanabe besides those who heard about him beforehand or people who had just heard about him because of a Kanye line and for like a two week period, everyone was fawning over it. Like Junior Watanabe, they had always known about it. And then a whole bunch of people start making videos about all the references that Kanye's making. No disrespect to people who did it, but I'm just saying. Rant aside, Supreme didn't need the yay cyst. It could have pulled that weight on its own. It's that popular. And it's just that Supreme makes the inaccessible accessible and wraps it in its ironclad branding. South to West State, that's crazy. I mean, you gotta give a slow clap to Supreme on, on a lot of these collaborations in the way that they're operating right now. So number five, definitely warranted. Coming in at number four, Telfair. I think that's how you say it. Telfair, Telfair, yeah, we'll say Telfair. The most popular bag on the planet, enough said, or at least in the West, Japan has a ton of bags. So we tend to look at most of the popular ones like, okay, why, <laughs> right? That aside, Telfair Clemens has been cleaning shop with his bags, selling out all the damn time, and even getting the Oprah cosign. The bags continue to fly off shelves, even though the designer himself has maintained that the label will continue to be inclusive, which is always great. Social media, however, brought the brand to prominence and it shows that not all of it is a facade. Sometimes good things come from social activism, no matter how many haters are there that, that are out there, right? And we, I don't wanna get too much into it, but gotta give it up to Telfair Clemens and the movement that helped his brand get bigger. So I'll leave that right there. At number three, we're gonna go with Balenciaga. Yeah, I, listen, I know a lot of people are going to either duh or ugh this pick, but come on, like really, really objectively, come on, let's be real. What label in luxury outside of like LV, maybe Dior is more relevant to Balenciaga right now, especially in the social media sphere. Balenciaga doesn't concern itself with just making clothing or designs. But Demma at the helm, Balenciaga is concerned about making moments. Despite what you think about high heel crocs or boots, made to order bag and sag and berry sweatpants or even the Simpsons Balenciaga, no question has the label changed the discussion in the world of fashion. I don't even know what that discussion is, but it changed it. Is Vasali a trolling? At this point, we all know he is. But when does the shtick get old? Are we just happy someone is out there proving that all this materialism is out of control? Which again, is per perfectly illustrated by Gucciaga, the hacker event. Balenciaga isn't the best luxury label by any stretch, but it is one of the most talked about and that's why it sits so close to the top of our list. Number two, Bottega Veneta. Bottega Veneta. It did everything Balenciaga did but without social media. That tells you just how crazy the label was in 2021 under the elm of Daniel Lee. By going super exclusive and putting the elite in elitism, Bottega Veneta made its core followers feel as though they were the most important to the growth of the label. And it worked! Despite being absent from the watchful eye of trend-seeking influences on social media, the brand became even more popular by just not being there. Its most successful thing, the lug boot. Everybody knows that. Pretty much everyone thought was the shoe to get for like half the year. Like you better have that. If you don't, then who are you? And despite Daniel Lee mysteriously stepping down, Bottega is doubling down on its position as a label for its people. Recently, it took down its branding on its shops to advertise local Italian food products, which is, yeah, they're going to the extreme. Bottega Veneta is becoming one of the most authentic labels in luxury. 
I applaud it. I love authenticity and a lot of people are eating it up as well. Coming in at number one, essentials. Jerry Lorenzo's Fear God Essentials. Yeah, I know. Some of you are probably thinking, wait, 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 wait. what happened to LV? Kid Super, all that. Yeah, they're great. Sure, LV did some notable work. And while VA's passing was tragic, more power to him. Objectively, Essentials was the most relevant and most notable label almost anywhere. Not only is Essentials a part of the current style du jour, you know, loungewear. It's, it's basically the brand of TikTok, Gen Z, and all those that graduated from athleisure, which is basically everyone. For some, that's hard to hear, but you should take comfort in the fact that loungewear is a thing and it's now okay to wear sweats, albeit high quality cashmere sweats outside. And Essentials is leading the way. Just make sure to pair it with some tractor boots or some Bottega Veneto lugs, and then you're, you're right there, you're, you're on trend. Not only that, but Essentials even does well in Japan, a country notorious for loving champion. I just thought I'd put that little anecdote in there. So while I personally don't wear Essentials, it's bar none our Western brand of the year, which basically makes it the brand of the year, but you kind of get it, you get it. However, this isn't a one-sided list. You two have some say in it. What makes your list of brands in 2021? Do we miss anything important that needs to be talked about? Let it all be known in the comments. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international street fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. Yoroshiku onagashimasu. And I'll see you guys in a minute.